Hello friends, today we are making a better player prefab for us to use. And what we can actually use, I was researching for a better crouching uh, script for our player. And you could, if you have your own character set up the way you want it, you could follow this tutorial on how to, how to do this and use this script for that. But you can actually use first person player prefab. It's a package on AC's downloads page, which I have open here. There is a lot of different like useful things that you could look at. Puzzle templates, there's some pathfinding stuff, different integrations to use for your game. But today we are going to download the player prefab first person. And once that's downloaded, you can get this here and it goes into Adventure Creator Downloads with all these different things. Import all of it. And once it's imported, go to the Adventure Creator Downloads folder first person player. Replace your player prefab here in the AC Game Editor settings, right here. Replace your prefab with this new one. It has different animations for walking and running and strafing and it has two different scripts attached to it. FP Audio and FP Crouch, which will allow you to include different sounds to the player when they're jumping and landing and also the crouch is so you cannot actually get up when you are in a location that you shouldn't be able to get up. So it will block the player from standing up in a tight space. You might want to modify the movement speed because in my test it was quite slow. We can try it out here. Like it has this slight bobbing and the running is a bit faster but it's still a bit too slow in for my tastes. So let's modify those values a bit. So I'm going to use something like 3 for the walk speed scale and maybe 8 is good. I think acceleration, these different values, these could stay the same. Let's try that. Now we're walking a bit faster and run is also faster. Is this a bit too fast maybe? I don't know. Well, if you want to have a fast paced game, then this is fine. We can also jump. Like so, we can jump here, we can get here, we can crouch, hold on, I actually need to, yeah, we can't crouch up here, but um, we did have active inputs, we had the, our own crouch, so you can just delete that from the active inputs, go to your asset lists, you can just delete the crouch, we won't need it anymore, because it doesn't deal with crouching all that well. And basically the only thing you want to have for your new first person player, you can see the input button set here is also crouch. So you need to have it in your player settings, in your input manager. We have set the crouch here before, but you need to have this in order for it to work. So yeah, that should work perfectly. When we go into this space here, it just barely fit into here, but that's fine. We cannot now get up, up when we are in this space. So that's nice. Okay, the only problem with this is that it's a bit chunky when you're going like this bridge here. It has a mesh collider, so it means all of these gaps, they don't have any collider there. So when we walk on this, it's doing that shaking. Like when we run, it doesn't look very good. So it would be preferable maybe for this player controller to have like actual box collider for this so it's like all smooth and doesn't have all those holes in it because it doesn't really need that and box collider is it's lighter to use anyway 
So you should probably do that. It's just a lot faster to just generate automatic mesh colliders for things, but, but sometimes it's not the best option. Like these boxes too should also just have a simple box collider. Overall, player prefab was a bit floaty when it like was jumping, but I think this works a little bit better. You can also always modify your physics values in your build settings, player settings, and in physics. I actually have set it to minus 12 here. It's probably a bit better than the original value it has here. Because we're in a game, so you can modify that a bit to make it seem a bit better like. It's not that floaty now. There is also something very interesting here, which I found. Combat example here, event hooks can be used to add custom functionality through script. This package demonstrates how to add classic Resident Evil style combat complete with enemies and 3D inventory. This would be really interesting to make, so I have to do this on my own first, and if I manage to do something cool with this, I will let you know. But I didn't have much else for today. I have just recovered from the virus that is going around the world right now, so yeah, I'm good now, but I'd like to ask you to tell me what kind of tutorials would you like to see from me. Um, I haven't done an interior map here yet, like we last time we made this, that we should be able to get in this building here after we bring the wine things, but yeah, please tell me what kind of stuff you would like to see.